Hi, this is Mike Boland, analyst with BI Kelsey, and welcome to the latest installment of our video series, uh, presentations of different things that we are doing and seeing uh, in our analyst coverage areas. Today I'm going to go over mobile location targeting, um, what's being done in the industry, best practices, and, and really some definitions around what we mean when we say location targeting, um, which is often something that uh, causes lots of confusion or has um, gotten some misperception throughout the industry. Uh, so we'd like to clear that up a bit. Uh, the best place to start when talking about this is looking at BIA Kelsey's forecast data um, that projects U.S. mobile advertising spend. Um, so we see uh, that advertising opportunity going from $13.25 billion last year uh, to about $42 billion in 2019. Now importantly, the part we're going to zero in on here is the, um, the segment of that overall mobile ad spend that is location-targeted campaigns. And it's very important to note that often when we talk about local or location, the immediate connotation is usually small businesses. Um, however, at this early stage of mobile advertising, um, the majority of the ad spend is actually coming from national brand advertisers and agencies that are uh, localizing their campaigns in lots of ways. It hasn't really moved down market yet in earnest to the SMB sector, though we see that beginning to happen through different uh, publishers and technology providers that are aggregating small business advertising spend. Uh, YP is a good example of a company that's really doing that and bundling in mobile advertising in all of the different offerings they have for both large advertisers and small. Um, so importantly though, when we talk about that location targeted segment, what really defines that? So there are lots of different flavors of location targeting as I like to say. Um, so for example, the first way it usually plays out is the association that most people have with location targeted mobile advertising, which is simply where the ad shows up. The geo-targeted component of the campaign, that's at the very basic level of, of location targeting. But importantly, it's not just where the ad shows up, but what the ad contains. So location-specific calls to action can really engage users to transact locally. Um, for example, um, click-to-call buttons or uh, ways to engage users to uh, get directions to the closest location. Um, now interestingly, uh, when providing phone numbers, it's often most strategic to actually use local exchanges and area codes. We hear from both Google and Telmetrics that the presence of that local area code um, in, in a mobile search context um, has really proven to give that, um, that ad or that search result a certain degree of credibility or veracity and, and it's proving out in higher click-through rates and uh, click-to-call. Um, so not just uh, directions and calls but also product information. Mobile users have proven to be lower funnel in terms of their buying intent. Um, so they're actually looking for skew level um, information on specific model products and not just that but where locally they can be bought. They're well past the research phase where they're looking for specs or reviews. They're looking for actual products and local availability. Uh, so the ability to capture their interest by providing that is something that is a continues to be growing area. Google's doing a lot here with its um, local inventory ads, formerly known as product listing ads. Uh, and then we also see interesting data providers like Retailigence uh, pull this together by working with retailers and supply chains and getting all that uh, product data and, and who has what um, in terms of uh, kind of point of sale real-time inventory counts. So a lot of that that I've gone over so far is in a search context. This also plays out um, in display. Um, so we see things like display ads that are getting innovative with dynamic distance feed overlays that tell uh, the user wherever they happen to be when they're viewing that ad how close they are to the nearest location where they can have the opportunity to transact. Um, that's really kind of growing as a location-based targeting tactic. Um, and then not just location and proximity, but importantly, location-related variables. Um, and a classic one is weather. Um, so with the advent of programmatic advertising, we're seeing a lot of programmatic campaigns where based on the weather, based on the part of the country, and several other factors, ads can be programmatically inserted that alter the creative based on those situational variables. So for example, uh, crunch, uh, you know, the, the gym that, that's spread throughout the country. If it's raining in New York, they can programmatically serve an ad that says, um, you know, it's raining out 
uh, come run on the treadmill instead of in the rain. And here's a coupon to do so. Um, so these are all very important, just a few examples of some of the ways that location targeting strategies are evolving. And again, it's just not that binary where you're standing, serve an ad there. It's many other kind of parts of this overall equation when we say location targeting. Um, so another important point is when done right, when best practices and some of these tactics are achieved, we can see results. Um, so for example, these are data from XAD that show the, the green bars here are essentially showing the where the ad shows up aspect and the blue bars are showing what the ad contains. If, if you go with the kind of delineation I drew in the previous slide, it includes um, all these different tactics. Um, so we're seeing things like competitive geoquests, geoconquesting, for example, um, serving ads near uh, competitors' locations, um, showing some strong results. Now, importantly, this is varying in different kind of areas. So for example, this study looked at lots of different verticals. On this slide, I'm showing just retail and restaurant because those are two categories that are very strong with national advertisers that localize their campaigns. Um, so you're seeing some variance. So competitive conquesting worked great in retail, but not so much in restaurant. However, things like the location, um, no, closest location dynamic distance feed overlay that I went over on the last slide, that's proving to really perform well um, in both categories. So the point here is that a lot of these tactics are not only working well, but it requires a lot of testing to see which of them work differently in different verticals or in different population densities, or there are just so many variables that really indicate that a lot of testing is required. Um, but when done so, um, you know, higher uh, performance can be achieved. And we're starting to see a lot of companies uh, work on that. Um, so, so another thing I want to go over is yet another level of of location targeting. Um, you know, so far we've gone over the, the actual kind of campaign tactics, um, but also kind of in a more holistic sense, location can be used to really define audience segments. So not just where I'm standing now and, and using all the things in the previous few slides to target me, but panning back, what are the, the last 20 places I went to? And what does that say about me as a consumer? Am I a soccer mom? Am I a business traveler? Am I a student? Um, using a location to better define audiences as a function of the places they go is something that's really developing quickly. And, and importantly, that's something that resonates with large brand advertisers because if you think about it, that audience targeting is really something they've been doing for years. This is just a much better and more granular form of it that's developing. Um, so to unpack that a bit further, uh, let's go over some of the kind of different levels of that location targeting. So one is contextual location targeting, where I am right now and what that says about the situational variables that can create a certain level of confidence of an, of an ad match or some relevance. So it's Wednesday, 7.42 p.m. I'm at Wrigley Field. Um, that, that's valuable information for an advertiser. Going one level deeper, um, not just where I am right now, but again, what are the, the other places I've been to in the past month? Uh, dining establishments, um, CPG brands, clothing, all of these things can really paint a more rich mosaic of me as a consumer and therefore allow advertisers um, better kind of metrics by which to target me. Taking that a step further, using that data to then put me into different demographic groups that can then be utilized by brand advertisers interested in reaching those groups. Um, and then lastly, um, then overlaying even more data, third-party data sets, such as um, kind of census household data or even kind of post-ad um, engagement offline attribution data from uh, providers like Newstar or Data Logics that can really um, close that loop and paint a, a clearer picture of me. Um, so to close things out here, I want to just go over um, what I like to call a public service announcement. Um, everything I just went over um, is really only a function of how good the location reading can be. And the dirty little secret is that most often it's quite inaccurate. Um, and, and the culprits here are agencies that will claim to pass along an accurate location reading when an ad request happens, but really they're going with a certain amount of degree of confidence that some cases might be completely wrong or even hundreds of miles away. Um, so the, the holy grail is when you can tap right into the GPS chip in the phone and that has to happen at the app layer with a user permission. That's when your app asks you to use your its location 
um, and for you to opt in. When people opt in, that's great, and, and you can get that reading. But when they don't opt in, which is most often the case, ad networks have to resort to some of these other blunt tactics to kind of triangulate a location. Um, so, so this is a very important kind of industry public service announcement that um, deserves recognition because we're starting to see some interesting things um, from companies like XAD and companies like ThinkNew, both of whom we're going to hear from on Friday that are really working on interesting ways to solve this problem because it is a key underlying challenge to unlock all of the opportunities that I went over in the previous slides and really work towards that um, kind of national brands being more effective with location targeting strategies. Um, so that's it for now. Um, a lot more to unpack here in terms of the drill downs and all of those little topics, but for now that's uh, kind of an overview of the most important things that BI Kelsey is seeing right now in terms of location targeted advertising tactics, particularly those executed by national brand advertisers, which is, um, again, the majority of the ad spend at these early phases. Um, so I'm Mike Boland. Thank you for listening. My contact information is here. We'd love to engage with you on this and other topics. Stay tuned for more presentations like this, as well as coverage on our blog, newsletter, um, and different kind of video initiatives we're working on. So thank you for listening.